No, it's someone's line. Oh, was it? Look, there, look. Oh, that's probably mine. That's what it got caught on, look, there. Nice one, Les. There you go. So here we are again, Eastbourne Pier. Haven't fished here for years and years, but they've reopened it. Uh, we're outside the tackle shop. I'm gonna go down in a minute uh, to meet some fishing friends of mine, and uh, hopefully that'll give a better idea of what's being caught as well. So you can make your choice here if you want to fish for the place obviously your three hook two hook flappers or loop rigs out a distance uh, depending which way the tide's going fishing for those place the other alternative is fish close in for the bass coming down now baldy's got a i think it's a dab let's have a look that's a place that's a place look at that Now one thing to watch out for, things like keys coming out your pocket where you've got this, it's better to get a mat down or a towel, particularly when you're messing around with smaller items, you know you're going to lose them down there. You can see there's been some uh, phenomenal catches of skate off the pier. Or basses there place as well. Also westbound and in Hastings there's temporary lights on St Helens. You're pretty well catered for inside the tackle shop as well. There's all the basics you need to fish at Eastbourne Pier. And pop in and see Dan, it's a nice chap. And he'll help you out with a little bit of advice as well, what's been caught. As you can see, it's even if uh, you've come without bait, there's plenty of fresh bait here. They've got a lot of frozen as well. So I'm going to put one rod out with the bluey. This is on a 3.0 hook. Uh, it's just defrosted enough. So in and out three times and then wrap it skin side in. Uh, herring's another option here actually, they've had a few on the herring, mackerel as well, uh, but I've got some bluey left over. And then obviously wrap that nice and tight with the bait elastic. Oh, 
that's the braid, isn't it? The braid when it goes through the bow line. It goes through the uh, runner. So this is where the action would happen with the bass, I guess. Uh, wait for summer. Hopefully we'll be able to fish the pier again. You've got like almost a, a third tier as well down here. You won't be able to fish this when you... Uh, you obviously wouldn't be able to fish this as the tide comes up, but right on low tide here. And you can see the sort of ambush points for the bass maybe. Perhaps some live bait floated over the edge once summer comes around. Could be a good option. Watch your kids down here. <laughs> so actually under the uh, the main platform. Oh, I bet there's some good bass that run in there. Drop net, of course. Always remember your drop net. They do have one. This is the piers version, but I want to get that drop net in place first, really. And there we're looking to the west towards Beachy Head. Want. I'm going to get all that shell off there. I'm going to get all that shell off. You can see the lovely yellow molting bit. Shell off there. That's the juicy bit. You can take these lungs out. I'm going to pinch them out. Cut them off. Just using our simple bass rig uh, that we did not too long ago. I'm gonna go in there. One, two. Back in. And then I go in and out of those leg sockets. away with that continental rod now just dropped it down low with that simple rig and the uh, peeler crab Not only does he have to uh, get this fish on, but he's also got to he's also got to put up with the banter as well. It's a lot of pressure for the man. <laughs> he's supposed to really eat. Bill now, and no, he's not sat here. I've never seen a place more boring in my life. Yes, uh, Baldy's cool place as well. I'm going to go whiting. <laughs> yeah, he can always. I'm, like <laughs> I'm always pessimistic though. Oh, Bill's just checking out that bite. He's going for it. He's going for it. Not on there either. <laughs> Thank 
<laughs> there you go. Bill's place. So that that was what I thought was a white in. Baldy reckoned a place and Les said place as well. Look at that. No, I'm posing. <laughs> Use your rod bag just to tie the rod on, stops the uh, rod scratching. Two lovely place for Dan, push on 40 centimetres, I think. Dan. <laughs> they, they cook one up for me as well, they just make one up for me. So I donate the fish, they make fish boil, fish cakes and all that. According to Dorset Echo, this is the magnificent moment an angler said the biggest mackerel caught in 30 years in British waters. The huge cannibal fish measured almost two feet long and weighed four pounds, four times the size and weight of the average Atlantic mackerel. So I'm tucked just underneath the steps to the lower platform. And all I've done is I've dropped, well I've actually got two whole peeler crabs on a 4-0 hook. And I've dropped that right down underneath the pilings. You run a little bit of a risk obviously that um, you're going to get snagged up in there. The other thing I've done there is I've not wound in nice and tight. So I want a little bit of slack in that braid. You'll still notice the bites, but then the bass won't uh, be spooked too much by that tight line on something on the other. I think they can be quite suspicious. It's a good state of the tide now for the bass. They're quite happy going for the place off the end there. Well, there's probably enough room here for about 30 or so anglers. You'd have to peg it, but. Uh, Usually if you're coming down on spec, is, you know, you should have a plenty of space. And that's a better size. No, it's someone's line. Oh, was it? Look, there, look. Oh, that's probably mine. That's what it got caught on, look, this. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, what are you doing? Go right, I'm going to take it. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, Les. Thirty-two. Uh, so we're here with Les again. He may well be the master of Hastings Pier, but he also fishes Eastbourne Pier as well. He's just landed a nice place of how how big was it, Les? Thirty-two point one. So 30. it's a nice edible fish. It can be taken home. It's had a nice girth on it, so it'll fill it well. And at the moment, it seems to be the uh, the incoming incoming uh, fish at the moment. The place uh, they've just had two nice ones up, upstairs, over over a pound. And uh, now we've now the tide's running, so we're starting catching more. We're getting more bites and starting catching more flatfish. We only seen a couple of rocklin today which is, uh, I think they're on the move to be quite honest and the dogs have quietened down and, and also there's a couple of fishermen up here fishing for rays 
on each ball, uh, bottom deck bum and also the, t the top. But unfortunately, I don't think they've quite managed it at the moment, but there's plenty of time. Uh, now that they're getting more water, Bill, Bill's just had another little touch on his. So it's a nice sunny day, a bit southwesterly. Water's pretty flat, it's ideal. And the, the colour of the water, a bit grey, but otherwise it's ideal for flatfish. And um, yeah, we've obviously seen dab caught today as well. Uh, what, what are we expecting to see as the summer comes in then, Les? Well, you'll start to see, actually, you start to, you should start to see soul. And, and yeah, Gernard's a, a Jew. Unfortunately, so are uh, spiders. Uh, the spiders won't be long, far behind. And of course, coming up to May, you'll get, well, actually, you might get it earlier in April. You'll start to get May rot. But uh, we get that every year. We just, we, st we get over it. So it's just part of the, part of fishing, really. It's still enjoyable, whichever way you look at it. But yeah, you know, a few souls should start coming in. There has one been caught up here. Um, so let's be hopeful. Dogs and, as I say, dogs and rays are starting to slow down now and rockling the odd one or two. Baby. Little baby. That's from last week's comments. This is on the last video we did where we got some place. Uh, Lee Fisher said he enjoyed it. He managed 12 on Lugworm from Eastbourne. Kerry Foster also wanted to say uh, he reckons he's been watching fishing decline in over 50 years now and it hasn't been great. He said you could once fill a bucket full of dab. So uh, it's going to take a lot more for him to get back fishing again. And then just wanted to mention something John Gales talked about. Things have moved on, obviously, with the coronavirus uh, and we shouldn't be fishing at the moment. Uh, so these messages have come in. He's obviously got people that want to get out there. Um, but as it stands... And I'm doing the voiceover today, 24th of March, uh, and this video was a couple of weeks ago now. Things have moved on, we shouldn't be fishing at all. Uh, so a little bit of bad news there, but it's not worth the risk. And the only thing I can do really is uh, wish you all the best, hope you're all well, and I'll keep coming up with some videos. Hopefully that'll keep you entertained until we can all get back out there again.